Hey everybody, welcome to my first video blog. Uh, my name is Tim Gallagher. I'm a longtime artist, filmmaker, musician, and this is my video blog on some ideas that I've developed over the years on using the art making process as well as the art appreciation process as a spiritual practice, as a path toward liberation. Um, I don't see a lot out there on this subject and some of it I, uh, I think is only partial and um, so I thought that this is something that needed to be shared with people. Uh, the ideas have been very useful to me and I hope they're useful to you. Um, a large part of this process that I'm going to be talking about is based on presence. And uh, presence is something that Eckhart Tolle talks a lot about and various other teachers. And uh, presence is fundamental to this. So today I'm just going to focus on presence and how it's useful in one regard. And in future videos we'll uh, investigate other ways in which it is uh, uh, pivotal to using the art making process and the art appreciation process as a spiritual practice. Um, so, okay, so first off, what is presence? Um, probably the simplest definition of presence is consciousness of consciousness, or awareness of awareness. Or to put it in terms of uh, a noun, awareness aware of being aware. Or consciousness conscious of consciousness. Um, it's that simple. If you ask somebody, are you conscious? They just reflect for a brief moment and realize, okay, I'm having perception. Yes, I'm conscious. So perceptions play a big part in, in the role of what most of us feel like uh, makes us conscious. However, the experience of recognizing that you're conscious can happen without perceptions. It doesn't have to rely on uh, the phenomenal world and the perceptions that we have through that, and that's what presence is. Presence is consciousness automatically or intrinsically recognizing that it is conscious. Awareness intrinsically aware that it is awareness. Awareness is a fundamental, the fundamental aspect of awareness. So that's what presence is, and you can experience it on a very simple level which is through perceptions of the phenomena, particularly within the body of the senses. So being aware of the felt experience of your arms and your legs, of, of your thoughts, of your, the things you're seeing, of the things you're hearing. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a relatively fundamental experience of presence. Um, Seeing and being aware that you're seeing, not just seeing blindly, so to speak, or being aware that you're hearing, being aware that you're sensing things in your body, that aware that you feel your feet. It's the awareness of the sensation, of the awareness, that makes it presence. However, it can also be a profound experience that alters us in fundamental ways if we experience it on a deep enough level, if we have a deep enough experience of presence. It can alter our sense of identity. It can alter our sense of what consciousness is. It can alter our entire life. And that is what the path of liberation is about, of experiencing presence at a deep enough level where it transforms our experience and sets us free from the locked-in blinders that we have about the nature of perception, about the nature of what we are, about the nature of consciousness, about the nature of our body and all that sort of thing. So this path of using art and art making as a uh, tool toward liberation um, is therefore very uh, centered around presence. So you may wonder, what does presence have to do with art and art making? Um, I'm just going to share one idea today, and it is, uh, will be particularly of interest to people who've studied fine arts and fine art theory, modern contemporary uh, fine art theory, because um, 
in, from my perspective, there's something missing from that uh, doctrine, so to speak, that set of theories. And um, I think it's something that can be very helpful to many people to include, and that is presence. Um, for those of you who are familiar with postmodern theory um, and deconstructionism, um, these intellectual tools have been very helpful in uh, deconstructing what were at one time thought to be monumental and unquestionable truths. Um, deconstructionism, uh, deconstructionism allowed us to see that many things that we took to be infallible are actually constructs, cultural and societal constructs, that serve just to keep power in the hands of certain people. And by deconstructing them, it became apparent that this was a case of the emperor's new clothes. There was actually nothing intrinsic to these things. I'm talking about things like sexism, racism, imperialism, colonialism, um, the concept that there was some sort of objective measure for beauty, um, that it wasn't culturally created. Um, all these sort of things that have played a big part in what is art, what is beauty, what is um, pleasurable sensate experience, have been deconstructed with postmodern thought in a very liberating way, so that um, we're not held in the same mental chains that we were at one time. However, and, and that's a wonderful thing, with the exception that it tends to leave people feeling back into a cynical or um, nihilistic corner, because it posits that, there, posits that there's nothing true, that there's nothing fundamentally, objectively true, and that all is a construct of society or of our minds, and that all is to be questioned. There's nothing authentically original. There's nothing fundamentally um, existent. This leads to a type of cynicism in the, in the arts, um, an over-reliance on irony and um, smart-ass kind of art, um, and also careerism, people just trying to please, artists just trying to please the gallery nexus or critics and figuring out ways to make money off the system rather than any kind of authentic expression. And the idea of authentic expression is, is, is laughed at. Obviously, from that point of view, the idea of spirituality or a spiritual perspective in art is also laughed at. Um, but, and I know, and I know, artists who won't even admit that they have a spiritual perspective for fear of the ridicule it will bring them. And I'd like to challenge that. I hope to challenge that with um, some of the ideas that I'll be sharing in these videos. The, the idea today has to do with presence. Presence, as I said, is consciousness conscious of itself. And that is the one thing that's left out of postmodern theory. All these things can be seen through and deconstructed with one very large exception, and that is consciousness. Consciousness is the foundation of all human experience. It is the foundation of what makes human beings human. It is fundamental to who we are and to our experience. And yet, it is a complete mystery. We have no idea what consciousness is, where it comes from, why it exists. There is no definitive proof that it is sheerly a byproduct of biology, of our brains. And there's no definitive proof that it transcends biology, that it is spiritual. So it is completely an unknown and a mystery. And yet, nothing can be said to be more true than the fact that we are conscious. Consciousness and presence, despite what postmodern theory says, are 
actually true, are fundamental to truth, to any evaluation, to any theory, to anything. Consciousness is primordial. It's the foundation of everything in life, as far as we're concerned. So in that sense, there is something that's true, that we can explore, that we can try to understand. It's our perceptions may just be a dream. We could be all hallucinating dreams. But if we are, the consciousness that allows us to see that is still true. So it is the very nature of being human. It is consciousness itself which is something that we can make a bedrock for our explorations in life and in art. And the fact that it is a total mystery and we don't know what it is makes it even a more fascinating subject for, for exploration. So um, that's just uh, a bit of what I want to uh, share about the process of art making as a spiritual path, um, but it serves to let you know that presence, which is consciousness, conscious of consciousness, is the foundation of art as a spiritual practice. So that's it for now. I'll leave it at that uh, with more to come, and we'll unpack that and look at it in more detail, look at the nature of perception, look at the nature of belief, and how that plays a huge part in our perceptual uh, experience, both neurologically and just experientially. Um, we'll look at practices that can help us um, sort all this out and, and experience uh, what we're talking about, so it's not just so cerebral and abstract. Um, and that can also help us be better perceivers, which is fundamental to being an artist. You know, it's really important to be able to see what's in front of you, to hear what you're experiencing, to parse out the senses and be as accurate as possible. So we'll get to some practices that will help you do that. All the while, helping you become more conscious of the fact that you are conscious. So thank you for joining me. My name's Tim Gallagher again, and um, I hope you come back and check out more. I've got text blog, and I've also got, uh, starting now, video blog. So feel free to check out any of the information that's uh, on my blog, both in the past and the stuff that's coming soon. All right, hope you take care. Bye.